Paul from Journey of a Petrolhead. This is the interior video for the 2008 CL500. Uh, we had the intro video there a few minutes ago. This is the model that was launched in 2006. Uh, and I tell you, it's, it's huge and the interior is huge and we'll show you. But what I wanted to show you first was the quality of what we're getting in the door. So what we have, it's, it's quite impressive. We have three settings for the electric heated memory seats, which is unusual. We have the controls here. So that's your headrest control. That's your center control to bring it forwards, backwards. That's the base, it slides the base forwards. But this, actually what happens is with this, when the seat's like that, if you push this forward, the seat goes this way and then that way. So you can change the distance between the squab and the back of the seat. I haven't seen that before. That's a really nice idea, actually. Now I do like that. That's our heated seat switch. That's a blank, I presume, for a cool switch, maybe. Four electric windows, folding mirrors, electric mirrors. But look, even with the armrest, you've even got a little small door pocket for pens, for example. That's a great idea. And to close the door, you put your hand back here, which is, it's un I haven't seen that before. And then we have the door pocket. We also have a Harman Kardon sound system with, I'm sure, several thousand radio speakers in here. It's, it's, it's nice, I like it. And what I really, really like about coupes, and they've done it in this one, is it is a completely frameless door. I haven't seen that in a while. I haven't had that on a car in a while. I like frameless doors in a car. I noticed the interior video. I forgot to mention it in the exterior video. Frameless doors are fantastic. It's a great idea. Now, let's show you the key. Mercedes key, standard Mercedes key. All the Mercedes have driven over the last however many years have all had this kind of a key with a lock, an unlock, and the boot release that we showed you earlier on. And you literally put this in ignition and start the car. It's a nice feel, it's a nice quality key, to be honest. That's a better key than what Jaguar or Audi are making because Audi and Jaguar have bits to come off the keys. This key is 12 years old. Apart from a few scratches, it's in great condition. So the quality of Mercedes is back to where it used to be. Now let's get in the car and show you what we have. Let's start with putting the key in here, turning it. Now, because the door is open, the seat is not going forwards. But had I got the door closed, the seat, like we showed you in the Jaguar S-Type video, the seat would slide forward to my driving position. That's a great idea. So, let's start the engine. I'm a sucker for a V8 engine, me. Come on in closer, camera girl, and we'll show you the interior. So, with the dashboard, I don't know what you can see there, guys, but we have a central speedo and rev counter, and we also have our gear display is here because there's our gear shift, right? It's on a stock like they do in America. We have a P, an R, an N, and a D. Which is kind of cool. So the P, you push the button, an R is up, and N and D is down. We have the standard controls from Mercedes. So these are our phone controls on this switch. This button here, with the four arrows and the OK, what that controls is in here on the screen. So if you see trip and navi and audio, I don't know if you can see it on the, on the video, but there's little writing just along here and that goes through the systems and it shows it to you in the big speedo. So if I flip that, for example, to navigation, it shows me that I'm currently facing west. If I flip it again, it shows me I'm listening to RTE Radio 1, which I'm not sure if I haven't, so don't worry about it. Okay, which is a nice idea. Now, you'll also notice I have it set to S for sport mode. We'll show you the control for that button now in a moment, but that's where it shows you what mode the car is actually in. Okay, then we have the standard Mercedes stocks. So we've showed you the gear shift stock. This one up here, the Mercedes have a stock here that gives you cruise control and the speed limiter, right? So it is simply cruise control, you pull and you, you pull and then you up and down for cruise and then limit, what you do is you push it in and that sets your limit and you push it again to turn it off. So that, that stock always confused me every time I borrowed a Mercedes, but I get the idea. And you have one final stock, the master stock down here, Mercedes do the lights and the wipers on the one stock they always have. So what we'll do is we'll just show you that real quick. There's the lights and the wipers down there. Turn for, wi turn for wipers, okay? Push for lights, indicators. Standard enough control, but a lot of people look for wipers on one stock and lights on the other, and in Mercedes, you don't get lights on one and wipers on another. It never happens. Now, 
What else do we have? We have. Ta da! That's really cool. That's a telephone keypad. That's a brilliant idea. I love that idea. I think that's really, really cool. Telephone is built in using Bluetooth technology. I think that's nice. We have. Now, we showed you seat controls. Sorry, guys, that's very, very bright. I showed you the seat controls there. Now, what we also have is a further system down here. This button, when you push this button, boop, you then look at the screen. So what happens is we have a separate lumbar control. The one thing that wasn't on that switch over there by the door was a lumbar control. And when I first drove this car, I couldn't find a way of setting the lumbar on until I started playing with more switches. And what we can do is we can adjust our lumbar as we drive. And you'll see the numbers go up and down. You can do it for both seats. And actually, that's quite impressive. I like a good lumbar support. I couldn't set it to anything beyond four on driving because it was too stiff for me after that. So there's a good support in these seats. I have never seen this on a car before. It's a nice idea. Okay, while we're looking at the screen, we also have this button here, which allows you to angle the screen. Watch the screen. You see the angle different directions. I've never seen that. What you could do here, if your passenger is doing the navigation and you're concentrating on the driving, the screen can tilt slightly towards the passenger so they can see what's going on. That's a brilliant idea, Mercedes. I wish other people did that. It's a great, I've never seen that before. That's a great idea. We have the really stylish Mercedes clock. I do like that. And then we have the final switches down here. So we have on off for the screen, volume control, mute everything, switch between the various systems. And here is the magic button. This is the one you look for. That's the M, the S and the C modes for your car. Put it in manual, sport or comfort mode. It's a great idea. That flips down the rear headrests behind me, which is a great idea. All Mercedes, or most of them anyway, have that. And that allows you to store your favorites. And you have your big command dial here, just to get through the various options on the screen. Now, if we look at the options on the screen, we have sat nav, and literally you flip, let me just show you, flip that up to get to the top of the menu, and then scroll left or right to get to what you want to do, okay? So let's do it again, let's go up to nav, let's switch to audio, and push the button down, brings it to audio, okay, we can tune. Apologies, I don't normally listen to that music. Then we have a telephone system, we have a video system, and we have vehicle. And there's a whole lot of settings in vehicle, so let's go through some of these and see what we have. So we have exterior lighting, we have locator lighting, which is nice actually. We have exterior mirror convenience. These are great settings to have. We have automatic locking, easy entry exit, Interior sensor, real arm, ambient light settings, interior lighting delay switch, boot, boot lid opening limiter for your valet, I'm thinking, and tow away protection. I like tow away protection because there was a time when people used to try and tow cars that they couldn't steal. Uh, you can't do it in this one. And that's your list. What else do we have inside? We have sunroof. Yeah, please, I think sunroofs are great. We have an auto dimming mirror, which in 2008 was pretty cool with various light controls and sensors. And if you take a look at the passenger side, we have the same control for the seats on the passenger side as we had on the driver's side and the same level of detailing, which is nice. We have quite a large glove box. And the seats themselves, let's have a quick look at the seats. So I do like the comfort of these seats is quite nice. The lateral support when you're hammering around corners a bit quick, maybe that could be a little better, but on a whole, it's, it's a nice car to drive. So a quick look at the back, plenty of space in the back, but you will see it is strictly a two seat car, like I said, with storage in the middle and the transmission tunnel goes right the way through. But there are lights in the back for the passengers and there's a lot of headroom. So all in all, it is a nice place to be inside this Mercedes. It's a very nice car to drive as well. Can you do, can you cut it, and then you can cut it in later, show the screen for video and phone, because I'd be interested in seeing that if I were 
what the screens actually look like an audio that's just the phone and um, the vents and then put down the back window and I'll do a shot of the back from outside okay and the clock did the clock and you did this yeah not yet Now we just thought we'd show you really quick the video option on the screen. So we'll just zoom in a bit closer. And there's your options. You have video, DVD, you have an auxiliary input, and your video off. Okay, that's standard enough. So you should be able to play DVDs. I don't know if they'll play while you're on the move. I severely doubt it, but I don't know the answer to that. Then we have the telephone settings. But there's no telephone paired here, so this isn't going to do a whole hell of a lot. But don't forget that if we want to use the telephone to dial anything, that's what this is for. Okay. Now, the one other thing we haven't actually shown you as of yet is the light switch. So as you can see, even in 2008, she had automatic lights. I have it set to automatic lights at the moment. It also has the parking lights, as you'll see, and we've had this before, where if you put that into parking mode, then with the indicator light, or indicator stock, if I flip it down, the left, in, the left light is on, and if I flip it up, the right light is on only while the car is parked. It's to stop people driving into you on a dark road. Okay. Uh, now, the final thing to say, I like a lot of air blowing on me when I'm driving. We've had this before. And the ventilation in this car is very good. There's a lot of it. It's also nicely presented. So, all in all, this is quite a nice place to be. My final comment, there is no uh, huge paddles on the shift. There are two buttons behind the wheel for manual mode for changing gear. But again, paddles mounted on the wheel. You gotta wonder about paddles mounted on the wheel. You see the buttons back here? There's one and the other one's over the other side. And that's for changing gears you hammer along, which is, it, it's, it's that they actually fall very nicely. I do like it. And in fact, if you're turning the wheel and you have your hand where it should be, that would work quite well, yeah? Okay, and the final comments as we get out of the car. The rear windows drop completely, which is nice. And again, the frameless, so it, it's nice. There's even a reasonable amount of space to get you in. And if you notice, the seat will go forward automatically to let you in. It's, it's, it's quite well thought out, this little car. Don't mind am I too bright? Okay, so that's the interior review of the 2008 CL500, and I have to say, I'm really, really impressed. This Mercedes interior is back to how Mercedes used to do it many, many years ago. The quality is great. This car is 12 years old. It's not a mark anywhere. Everything just works. The finish, the detailing, the, the level of comfort, the, the, the thought out that went into this. Whatever engineer sat down and went, I'm going to make this nice and comfortable for people. 180,000 quid he'd want to. Uh, he, he did it very, very well. It's a nice, nice place to be. It's got a lot of toys and everything works 12 years later not a squeak or a rattle out of anything this is the way cars should be built and it's a shame they aren't still okay so join us in the next video where we're going to take this behemoth on a test drive we tested it in sport mode i think because I, I drove it in comfort mode it was nice but that's not how i would drive it normally so i would test it in the mode i would drive it in normally which is sport mode i'm looking forward to that 400 horsepower and 530 newton meters of torque that's going to be fun so tune into the next video guys we'll take this on a test drive and as always, like and subscribe and we bring you loads more videos.